Since starting Giving Back TV, I've realized just how hard it is to be in the outdoor industry. What may look like a dream life from the outside comes with its fair share of obstacles and roadblocks. It means traveling hundreds of thousands of miles each year. It means being away from your home and loved ones for extended periods of time. It means learning to function with little or no sleep until you're at near exhaustion. We've dealt with dangerous individuals in the jungle, had close calls with wildlife, ended up in emergency rooms, and escaped death on more than one occasion. Despite all this, our fire and vision keeps pushing us forward time and time again. When people ask when we're gonna hang this up, I always have the same answer. We're just getting started. <laughs> this week, we are in a remote part of Botswana, Africa. Whenever we go on safari, the Giving Back team always takes time okay. to visit the locals and, of course, spoil the kids. We were there trying to help them with some problem elephants in the area. Before heading into the Botswana bushveld, we made sure we had all the right supplies and that the vehicle was tuned up and ready to go. The first day of our hunt, we came across a woman who was chased back to her home by a couple of elephants just that morning. They give me a, a prowl. Yeah. They hear them breaking up some branches that side. I think she ran away. She ran away from there. But hey, what are you doing? Hey, what are you doing? Hey, they say there are some some people who simply go there to ask those people. Then you get the after traveling down the road, we found the tracks of the bulls who had chased that woman earlier that day. After a short tracking job, we caught up to them, feeding in the trees in front of us. Let's go to this place. 
These bulls were pretty hidden back in that thick stuff, and they fed off before we could get a clean shot. So we picked up the tracks again through all that tall grass and lush vegetation. We tracked those bulls all afternoon, and just before dark, we finally laid eyes on one of the bulls feeding back in the trees. We were hoping we could get a position and try and get this bull before the sun went down. Okay, four inches below the eyes. Giving Back TV is brought to you by Camera Bullets. City Motor Company, Huntec Pro, Kanadi Elite Taxidermy Studio, Kenadrek Boots, Kafaru International, and True Flight Adventures. Okay, four inches below the eyes. Oh my god. Well guys, sorry about that one again. No, no. You did the round following up. I only got one shot and no shot anymore. Yeah, but what? That's half a mile around about. So. Mm. Half a mile. That's a little over a quarter. No, a quarter is 400 meters. 800 meters is half a mile. Yeah. So I would say that's a close estimate. So yeah, it didn't go too far? No. Right. It always seems far because you just you never know how far you're going to go. But you could clearly see there with the vitals being hit, all the blood coming yeah. through the nose and finally started bleeding a lot over here. We were, they were losing the track here, then you heard that noise when you basically collapsed, luckily. Yeah. That was a good feeling to hear that. Yeah, it is, definitely. Wow. Thank you, guys. It was too late that day to do anything with that bull. So we came back the next morning, waiting for all the villagers to show up knowing they would utilize every part of that elephant for their families. I was also able to officially claim my elephant that day, partaking in an old African hunting tradition. Congratulations, Heather. Thank you, buddy. Those elephants are officially yours now. That's the old African tradition to claim your elephant, to cut the tail, keep it with you. Good stuff, man. Good stuff. That is really cool. So, it's the day after. Um, you know, we got on this bull kind of late in the day. Uh, and by the time we got him down, it was almost dark. We got a, a couple pictures last night, but we got in here today and you know took some photos and now the team's getting him all cut up uh, and all the meat's gonna be utilized by a lot of the locals. And it just amazes me. I mean, so many people don't know what happens over here and they don't believe in elephant hunting, but every part of this hunt, there's a positive story to it. I mean, we have a gentleman here from the government, from the anti-poaching unit, 
he's basically employed with hunter's dollars. Um, we're out here in the field. We're keeping track of wildlife. All this meat's going to be utilized. So many families are going to benefit from this. You know, the animal-human conflicts are on the rise over here in Africa, and this is actually how we found this elephant. Uh, a young lady from one of the villages flagged us down and said that she had had a run-in, and um, we actually found four different elephants, this being one of them. So, I mean, there's so many elephants in the southern parts of Africa that uh, the, the media just misleads people right and left. So like I said before, I mean, all the meat's gonna be utilized. We're uh, reducing the numbers, trying to help avoid animal-human conflicts. The money raised from this hunt will go to employ people, even anti-poaching people in this region. So, you know, a lot of good happened uh, the last two days with this Giving Back team, and uh, I couldn't be more proud to be part of it. It was incredible to watch the people filter in and out all day to partake in cutting up this elephant. The entire village worked together, making sure nothing went to waste and that everyone had enough meat to take home to their families. We believe in giving back. Yeah, no, this meeting is going to last us for two months. We are going to enjoy it for two months. So we are ready now. Watching all the villagers work together and seeing how happy they were to get this much needed protein, it was an incredibly special day for all of us. Okay guys, yeah, we were cutting this area for tracks. We found some tracks in the dry ravine down here. We followed the tracks out and we're heading this direction. We've got a feeling we're pretty close, so let's hope for the best. We're gonna take a little walk and see if we can catch up to what we think is two bulls. So it's been a long time in between. Let's see how we make out. My good friend Ralph Hanscom was back in Botswana to hunt elephant for the second time. Now Ralph had hunted hard his very first trip, but the stars just didn't align. Elephant hunting is much tougher than most people think. But this afternoon, the tracks we found were very fresh, so we were hopeful we could catch up to these bulls before it got too dark. We would catch glimpses of these bulls from time to time as they were slowly feeding in front of us. We made sure to keep the wind in our face and just kept stalking towards them slowly through these thick trees.
Is he okay? The tracks led us out to a creek bed, and once we were out of the trees, we saw one of these bulls feeding out in front of us just a short distance away. As we were stalking that bull, he kept stopping and turning his head. He knew our presence was there. So we decided to go across the creek bed, hike back up in that thick vegetation, and try and work our way in front of him. But before we could even get to him, we walked right into another bull, and the whole team had to react very quickly. Yeah. Oh, that's you, eh? Hey, yeah. Yeah, shoot. Not him. 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 Not Why don't you shoot your fist quick? I'm oak. I'm going to escape. Huh? That moment happened so fast, and we realized that Ralph's shot was just a little bit low. We tracked that bull until the end of the day, but decided to wait until the next morning before picking up his track, knowing it was far too dangerous to track that elephant at night. Giving Back would also like to thank the following partners. The next morning, we had two teams out tracking in that area. The grass was so tall and the vegetation was so thick that we wanted as many people helping as possible. We were confident we would find that bull, but wanted as many boots on the ground as possible. A short time into our hike, we heard that Ralph and his team had his bull down. Hello to the happiest man in the world. Congratulations. <laughs> Very well done. Hey, hey, hey. Good. Well done. Hey, my man. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hey. Hey. Hey, Shorty. How are you? Good to see you. Good elephant. Yeah, yeah. Nice one. Good elephant. Oh! Yeah. Achille. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Beautiful. Oh, it's worked out well, Harry. Beautiful elephant. Classic stock. Everything was perfect. Everything was perfect. As everybody knows, in the old African tradition, like Bell and those guys, when you shoot the elephant, claim the elephant, your ivory, everything, you need to cut the tail, keep the tail with you. 
anybody else gets to that, they know it's been hunted and they should leave it alone. So Uncle Ralph, you did that and now it's your honor to cut that tail. Well, thank you in the African tradition. I'll gladly accept that. Perfect. Thank you. And uh, from the bottom of my heart, I am honored to be in the African tradition with such fine sportsmen. I'm honored to be in the ca in the company of the Botswana depart game department, Rep Mimi, the representative, and the town scout. My good friend Shorty here as well. The trackers, the other boys are off. Friends are new. Gerard, Sice, it's just uh, just an uh, amazing experience, Botswana, and uh, it's everything they could ever imagine it to be. So if you have the opportunity to uh, come to Botswana, it is the people of hospitality, the people of honesty, and the people of hard work ethic, and I'm honored to be part of that. Thank you so much, sir for giving me this opportunity. Thank you, Uncle Thank, Thank you. you. It was an honor hunting with you. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Woo! Hey, there you go. Seriously, <laughs> this is your second trip uh, within a month's time. We didn't manage on the first one. Uh, elephant hunting is not as easy as people think it is. No. <laughs> um, you know, people think it's walk up and get it get it on the floor. It's It's really not. Uh, we need to find the right one. This was the right one in an area where it caused a lot of problem and damage. And um, you know, here's the aftermath of what we've done. Almost completely utilized. Uh, there'll be nothing left, I think, when we move out from here. And this is conservation at its best. Conservation through utilization. And that's what we all, that we're all about. Um, a lot of happy people around. I think a lot of people are going to be happy for a couple of months to come. Lots of meat to go around, lots of people that, that got something and hopefully we can keep on doing this so the people can still keep on utilizing this, this meat. Well, when my wife insisted that I come back, I think the single biggest factor why we come back is for what you people stand for. And you said it, it was the right elephant. Yeah. And uh, you just don't shoot elephants. We shoot the elephant that needs to be shot. And I think everyone's in agreement that this was one that needed to be taken out. So, that wonderful feeling. No, absolutely. And it's thanks to thanks to guys uh, like you that support us and support the cause. And um, yeah, hopefully, like I said, we can keep on utilizing elephants in this way. The elephant population in Botswana is very healthy. More than healthy. I think uh, there's, there's way more than people understand. Yes. Um, you know, you can ask any one of these people around. This, these elephants interfere with their livelihoods on a daily on a daily basis, and um, you know the the joy that comes out of out of them when an elephant is down like this. Not only for the meat, but props that's not being raided anymore. Um, elephant bull that's destroying water water sources, crops. Um, you know, they get a little bit of satisfaction from yes. the meat. For sure, and likely, likely most of these elephants have cost them money yeah. on their farms and, and their habitat and their grazing. So it's a beautiful, beautiful cause. Oh, absolutely, beautiful cause. absolutely. I never felt more fulfilled about a hunt in my life as I have on this Botswana elephant hunt. Oh, that's great. Wonderful again, experience. Congratulations and thank you for your contribution. <laughs> thank you so much, Mr. Koch. Thank you so, so very much. This is wonderful. You can see there's not much of Ralph's elephant left. Um, locals came in and got it cut up in just a few hours. Um, you know, when you heard from a lot of other people about the importance of elephant hunting, I know that a lot of hunts are controversial, probably no more than elephant hunting. And the bottom line is it's just very misunderstood. Um, you know, you've heard about the overpopulation, you've heard about the economic relief, you've heard about funding for the anti-poaching and obviously you can see firsthand where the meat goes so i um, very proud of this team very proud to be a part of this team and uh, we all believe in giving back we believe in giving back my name is ralph hanscom i'm a canadian and i believe in giving back we believe in giving, giving back, back.
We always have so much fun on these trips and plenty of pranks are played as well. We had to make sure we played one last prank before this safari officially ended. Hey, you Hey, hey, well done, well done. <laughs> Thank you for watching this week. We'll see you next week on Giving Back.